All right, so this is the LE Tech refrigerant leak detector. We're gonna open this case up. We're gonna look at this leak detector. We're gonna take it out onto a job site and we're gonna do some demonstration on it. The buttons, how it works, how it functions, and we're gonna do a leak test with it right now. All right, so here's everything in the case, all the contents, okay? The leak detector, obviously. We have a bag of spare filters right here. This is gonna be charged up. We're not gonna replace batteries, so it's got a plug goes into the wall and then we have the, the charging cord which is a USB, uh, micro USB uh, charging cord. What I thought was pretty cool is it comes with this little light. Now if we go up, this is, uh, it's got two lights in it. We go up, just your regular LED flashlight. We go down, it's actually a UV light. So if we have dye in a system, this light will find it, right? And if we just wanna turn on the light because we're in a dark area, we can pinpoint the leak location with, with the light. And this just fastens on to the side of that, just like that. So one thing that I thought was cool about this, I guess we're gonna call this a, a gooseneck, flexible gooseneck, is you can really manipulate this thing into the, the way you want it to go. And it doesn't feel like it's gonna break when you're doing this either. It really is that flexible. So you can kind of put this in the area that you want it to go if you're in a tight spot you can just bend it the way you want and i thought that was pretty cool as well so here's a cardboard cover that came over the case and just a couple things here so 10 years of use out of the sensor is what is advertised and the other important thing to know is that on high sensitivity it can pick up 0.1 ounces per year of leak rate so those are important to know it's got an lcd screen Okay, and we're going to turn this thing on and we can see the screen brighten up and then we're going to go over to a unit and we're just going to do some, some checks with it. So I've come into the shade here just to get a better view of the screen and turned it on and you can see it's got a 30 second warm up time. So let's let it warm up and go from there. Okay, let's check out some of these buttons here. So if we want to change the sensitivity, that's very easy to do. We just hit it and it goes from high to medium to low, all right. Um, we can actually mute. You can see in the top left corner, there's a speaker button there. We can mute that, very easy to do. So if we're working in like a, a sensitive area, like a classroom or something, where that kind of beeping is going to be annoying to some people or distracting, we can mute it, which is very good. So we can turn the peak on and we can turn the peak off. So when the peak is on, we are going to rise to the top and we're gonna show the peak on the left hand side there all right and when this larger bar drops down the smaller bars will stay intact showing that the leak rate hit a certain point along the way so we can turn that on or off now the reset button I'm not quite sure what that does just yet I played around with it a bit I'm not quite sure what it does but sensitivity mute and peak are all very self-explanatory here so let's try this meter out so we're inside of a walk-in condensing unit with some fittings, a relief valve, some more fittings there, uh, Schrader core, solenoid, and these are all potential leak points. So I figured this would be a good candidate to start checking some leaks on. So let's go ahead and, and check some leaks. And just so you know, the peak is on and the sensitivity is on low. Now these relief valves, I found that they leak sometimes very, very slowly. I've found in the past that they can have a very slow leak rate. So this is actually a good test to put it in here and see what happens. And keeping in mind we're on the low setting. So let's try that on the high setting and see what happens. There, we're on high now. No difference. So one area of a system I find leaks quite often is this valve assembly here with the stem on it. Now right here, this packing gland, it usually leaks around here, but if we tighten that back up, it's usually not a problem. Where we stick our gauges or our smart probes, this service port right here, there's no threads in this particular fitting to put a, sh a Schrader core in. So these leak quite a bit, especially if this stem 
cannot seat properly when it's fully back seated. So we're gonna check under here. I find these are notorious for leaks. What I usually do is if I find a leak here, I'll put a little bit of nylog on the threads and seal it back up. All right, because to go and replace an entire valve is usually not gonna happen. The customer's not gonna pay you for it for an entire valve when we can fix it right here with a little bit of nylog and that's usually the easiest way to do that, the most economical way for the customer. So I'm gonna open this up and we're gonna check it right now. Okay, so I've got the cap off and we're gonna go in and we're gonna check. And see, we are getting, we are getting a reading there, as I thought, all right. So let's see what the, the LCD screen on the detector is showing. Okay, so there is the LCD screen and you can see here that the peak rose to the very top. All right, so that showed us that we had a leak at some point, right, when we were performing our test. If we hit peak, the peak is off now, so we're not gonna get that peak and it's always gonna go back to the baseline. So we're gonna get a bit of nylog on the fitting there and as always, it's best to put the nylog right here on the seat where the two ends meet. So just a little bit, we don't need a lot. Okay, that is more than enough right there. And then I just wrap it around the threads as well for good measure. We're gonna tighten this back up. And then we're gonna recheck again and see what happens. Here we go, checking again with the leak detector. And that leak has disappeared. Not disappeared, it's still under there, but we have concealed it with the cap and the nylog.